So hey everyone, welcome back to Just Therapy. Thank you so much for those of you who have come across and joined from whether it be tea and therapy or whether maybe you have seen this video and decided to give it a watch and then join up. I really do appreciate the support that you've been giving me so far and I am really keen to get myself to that first of thousand subscribers. So I hope that you guys will share these videos. So hopefully these can help more people and they might come along and subscribe as well. So uh, my name is Emma. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Emma. I'm a qualified therapist and trained life coach. And in these videos, I want to be able to give you tips and tools um, in the field of mental health. So perhaps if there's something going on in your life that you need support with you, there will be a video here that will help you navigate that and give you some understanding of what is going on. Um, if you haven't um, seen my other videos, then please go and check them out. They are below. I've done, a, I think I've done about... Uh, I think I've done three now. So this is a very, very new fledgling channel on this one. So, um, so yeah, so please go and check those out. I am keeping on the theme of narcissism. I'm going to be doing different playlists. So this one is going to be about narcissism. So I'm asking all of you, so if you have anything that you want me to talk about in relation to this, please put it in the comments below and I will look into this. I have so far done one on why narcissists target people um because a lot of people have said to me what do i do wrong why do i keep attracting people like this so if you are somebody that suffers like that then please go and check that video out because that will explain a little bit more that it's not about you it's about them but i can understand why you might feel that way also i have done a video on love bombing and what that looks like and why there is a slight differentiation from male to versus female so if you have something that you might want to look at to look we put my teeth back in look into there then please go and check that one out so this one is going to be about narcissistic parents many of you have asked me to do something on narcissistic parents and narcissistic children so i'm going to talk a little bit about that so if you really are interested in this then please think about liking this video or subscribing to this channel because this might be for you so that being said let's dive right in So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about narcissistic parents, because a lot of you have said to me, please, can you talk about narcissistic parents? And I thought, well, alongside that, I'll also sort of delve into narcissistic children. Um, so firstly, you, you would have to look at why you believe that you, you have, you've had this in your life, whether you've had a narcissistic parent or whether you have had, you are, you have or had a narcissistic child. Um, and how do you deal with that? How do you deal with somebody that is experiencing um, this type of, uh, you know, showing this type of behavior and how you experience that? And a lot of the time it can be very difficult, especially in if you have to uh, still live with that person. Like, for example, that your 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 child is still living with you. Um, I say child is probably like, a, you know, an adult, your adult child is still living with you or you or you're still living with your your parents. And then also then it's OK if you're not. But then that realisation that this is this is who they've they've been and how this affects you. So let's look at. Before I get into kind of looking into if you're still living with them. So let's look at if if you've come to this realisation that you're uh, you've you've been a parent and you're you've raised your child and they're now developing narcissistic traits Um I would say, you know, is this something that is suddenly come about now? Um, because if it's if it's come about now, then these these would be traits because the chance are if it's narcissistic personality disorder, you would have seen elements of this. There'll be a lack of empathy, a lack of compassion. Um, their emotional cues would be slightly off uh, in comparison to the situation. So it could be that, you know, you might be really crying or really upset and they are kind of looking at you quite blankly. Um, they don't really understand what's going on or they don't particularly show that they care. So if there's not any of that, then they started to develop narcissistic traits, um, in which case then they are similar to narcissistic personality disorder, but they're not actually the disorder. So it's just kind of they're coming in where they're starting to maybe act like they don't have a lot of empathy or they um, are not very kind. They're very cruel, um, very cold, very distant with you. So it kind of comes across as if they're like narcissistic traits. Um now, if you're dealing with somebody that is a, that is a child, this can be very, very, very heartbreaking, especially if you have raised the, this child, raised them to be loving or felt like you were a good parent. 
um, and then suddenly your child is either coming to you and saying, you know what, you're a terrible parent, or actually they're not telling you anything, they've just literally ghosted you and then decided never to speak to you again. This is potentially one of the most heartbreaking situations to be in because it can sometimes come out of the blue and sometimes um, you have no understanding of where it comes from, or it could be that you've had a falling out and you think that falling out you're going to get it's going to be okay you're you know you'll you'll come back together you'll sort it out and then it will kind of be fine um but it doesn't and then all of a sudden this person is suddenly just deciding that they never ever want to speak to you again and this can be so soul destroying especially because the love that we have as parents um i think it's like you can't quantify it. It's 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 just it's just a, something that's so deep rooted. So it's almost like someone's wrenched out your heart and and stomped all over it. Um, and this can be so so devastating. And to some people, it feels like you 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 don't know how to recover from this. Um, so what I would say is, if you feel that if if you feel that this has happened to you or this is happening to you then if you're not able to speak to your child to sort out and get to the bottom of what is going on for them because a lot of the time they don't tell you they will just tell you that you're a terrible parent or they might pluck things um and your your experience of that is completely different um so you don't really understand why they're saying and doing what they're doing so in which case then if you can't have a conversation with them then all you can do unfortunately is work on yourself to be able to get through this because this is going to be so hard to do if you are not somebody that is able to um in a sense kind of step back from the emotional aspect from it um because you're gonna it, you're gonna grieve you're gonna grieve you're gonna grieve the loss of the relationship that you had with your child there is no two which ways about it and then what can make it worse is if it can it can then bring up other things of your life that perhaps you haven't dealt with. And so that that's going to bring those things up as well. And then it's going to magnify and be a lot worse. So what I would suggest you do is if you're not able to sit down and talk to your child and have an adult conversation, because and let's be clear, most of the time, if you are what you would say is a, a, a decent parent, you're not perfect, no parent is, but you've tried your best um, and you've given your child a home, a, you know, a roof over their head, clothes on their back, food on the table, you've given them love as much as you, you can. If this hasn't been enough and for some reason they've decided that they no longer want you in their life, um, and they're not willing to sit down and talk to you about it, that can show you the emotional maturity isn't there because for the most part people don't make these type of decisions lightly they don't t tend to step away from people they love and care about without having any emotional connection to that so if your child is stepping away from you and literally acting like it's just nothing then there is every chance that yes they could they absolutely could be having this is narcissistic traits or something could potentially be going on for them and they're not telling you what that is um but if they're not willing to sit down and talk to you about it, there isn't really much you can do. So my suggestion there was when I speak to clients is create your child to feel that no matter what is going on, they're still loved. So they know that, that you love them. And if that means that you, in the beginning, if you choose to, you can still send them birthday cards, Christmas cards, etc. Even if they don't acknowledge you, because you've got to look at, your, you know, you're doing that to let them know that even though they're mad at you or even though they're behaving a certain way, you can still, you know, you're still there. You still love them. And if you want to talk about it, I'm here, I'm ready. Now, it is OK to sit on the sidelines and do that. However, it is also OK if this becomes too painful, if the rejection, the continuous rejection of them not coming back and talking to you again, if this keeps happening, then you it is OK for you to go, you know what, I love you and I'm here for you, but I'm, I've just got to step back from this. I can't keep putting myself through this pain and torture of expecting you to contact me. 
So it's okay to have self-care. It's okay to step back because you will get, you will find that you will get people that will tell you what to do. They will be people that, oh my gosh, it's, this is your child. You, you know, you, you, you never ever just walk away from them. Never ever just abandon them. Well, you're not abandoning them if they're an adult for a start. You are letting them know that you still love them. You still care and, and you're there if they need you. But however, you're not just going to keep either being someone's verbal punch bag or being someone's um, where they, they don't acknowledge that you even exist. That's not OK either. So you have to look at what's right for you. If you're feeling continually hurt and you're in this kind of funk where you're just you're stuck, you're stuck in this because you're not able to move forward, then then that is when you have to kind of really look at yourself and think, OK, what do I need to do here? Because this isn't working for me. You know, I've, I've tried everything. I can't reach them. And, you know, I need to, I need to step back. Now, if you're in a situation where you're you're still living there and your child is treating you badly, then. You have two options in a way, really, if they're adults and they're treating you like this. You tell them to leave. And I know that might seem very harsh, um, but and again, it comes down to your choice. Are you going to keep continually being um, made someone's verbal or, or or even at times, sorry, just hiccuped there, physical uh, punch bag because they're your child? Because as much as you're considering them, they're not considering you. You do not have to put up with terrible behavior just because that person you gave birth to that person or or that or you or even if it's not that case, like you're the, the step parent, the foster parent or the caregiver or, or whatever situation you're in. If you're looking after someone that you see as a child of yours, if they are abusive to you, you do not have to put up with that. Now, I'm not saying kick them out onto the streets so they're homeless. You can certainly put things in place where you make sure you find somewhere for them to go um, or you, you kind of look out for those things and there's always going to be exceptions to the rule because I know that I'm possibly going to get in the comments like you know that I can't do that because of course there are exceptions to the rule unfortunately as a as a therapist talking on camera I can only give you a, a generalized idea um obviously as a therapist when I have a client that comes to me I speak to them with reference to their specific um story and that's and I would work accordingly. But obviously I can't go through every single scenario because we'd be here all day and that wouldn't be helpful to anybody. So if you, generally speaking, if you are not um, in a situation where you feel that, you you know, if you've got other family members that maybe can take this person on or or, you know, but you do not have to put up with this type of behavior. So if you feel that your child is developing narcissism or they're certainly showing traits of this or they're just behaving badly, um, if you cannot sit down and say to them, look, this what is going on here? This is not OK behavior. I do not have to put up with this because as much as we put boundaries up in life with it, when it comes to other people, strangers, we also should be putting boundaries up when it comes to our family. We should be saying, hang on a minute. This is this is not OK. You don't get to speak to me this way. You don't get to disrespect me. So then it, it comes down to are we allowing behavior to happen beforehand? And then it escalates. And as they get older, it becomes more extreme, perhaps more aggressive, more violent, um, which started off when they were kids and just, you know, what we call throwing their toys out the pram, then becomes worse. So in which case, then you have to also look at your part in something. And I know that can sometimes seem harsh, like, but, but for us to work on things, we also have to own our part in something. We have to own if um, we enabled someone's behavior, if we let them get away with things because we thought it was funny or cute or whatever it was. And then as they grew up, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then suddenly here they are as almost adults or adults and they their behavior is absolutely shocking. Um, it's not that you're a terrible person. Of course, it's not. Um, but it's once we acknowledge that side of it, we can then go, you know what? I realise that I let you get away with things. I realise that I enabled a lot of this behaviour. But what you're doing right now is not OK. And if it doesn't change, you are going to have to leave and find somewhere else because I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to be someone that you feel that this is OK to behave this way. So if you're in a situation where you have a child like that, then you then it's about acknowledging that part 
in that because if you don't and you allow it to continue I guarantee you it will get worse the respect from them will get less and less and less and less and the way they treat you will get worse and worse and worse and worse so as hard as what it is and I do appreciate believe you me how hard it can be to stand up and say something like this because deep down any parent one of their risks is that my child will go and never speak to me again and understandably so that's devastating but a lot of the time this will end up happening because if they are feeling okay to disrespect you in the way that they do it's going to continue to happen it's you know unless they have an, uh, some kind of epiphany or wake up call they are going to continue to disrespect you if they cannot see that losing you as a parent um, is devastating enough to change their behaviour, then pretty much nothing will unless, like I say, something else happens down the line. So as much as I understand this is devastating, speaking to somebody is also crucial, I would say, in this. Whether even if you can't afford a therapist, speaking to a friend or another family member that can really understand and empathise with what you're going through to create you to feel that you're not crazy, you're not a horrible parent, you're human and you there's only so much we can put up with. As much as what we might love our children, there is only so much we can put up with. Now, if this person, like I say, has a narcissistic trait, then there is every chance that they could get better especially like maybe if they go off and they have a, a friend group or they uh, meet some a uh, partner and that partner starts to notice certain behaviors and they say you know what if you don't change this um i'm i'm not sticking around sometimes for someone to change that they have to have something bigger than themselves something else has to matter more now ideally we'd like to be that as our, as parents we want we want to be that person but unfortunately not in in most a lot of cases it isn't and it's usually Either perhaps they become a parent themselves or they meet somebody, fall in love and that person says, you know what, if you don't change, I'm leaving. And then that might be enough for them to go, OK, right, I really need to look at that. And when they do, that is potentially when they will come back to you and say, I've been doing this work on myself and I've realised I've treated you terribly um, and I'm so sorry. And that is also a potential to happen, in which case then you can go from there. You can decide what you want to do with that information. Um, now, if you're dealing with somebody, um, a child that has, you believe has narcissistic personality disorder, um, that's a, a difficult one because firstly, I, I don't know, I don't know a lot of parents because most, to be honest, most people, I'm not saying all, but most people that have that develop narcissistic personality disorder, it, it usually comes from something to do with the parents. Either the parents completely spoil and enabled them, um, never set them any boundaries, let them get, literally get away with absolutely everything, gave them everything or made them feel that they could have anything they wanted, do anything they wanted with zero consequences. That can then develop. Um, also, like I say, they can be born with it or a lot of the time a, a parent will one one or other parent will, will have this um, and so they will then grow up the same way. So if you're noticing your child is developing this way, then, then there's every chance that it possibly isn't narcissistic personality disorder. It's potentially just narcissistic traits or they have some other type of personality disorder when it, it could be even in the realm of uh, there are some people that have Asperger's, which can develop narcissistic traits, which can look very similar. Um, even ADHD at times, it can look like um, narcissistic traits. Histrionic disorder can also look like narcissism. Um, so there are certain other things that they could potentially have. Or it could just be uh, uh, something that's going on with them uh, inside of their bodies. I would say kind of get a lot of things checked out first before you automatically might think that they have developed narcissistic personality disorder because it is a little bit unlikely especially if there's no sign of it in their childhood um there would be signs from the very beginning really when they started to develop that these type of things were starting to happen unless like i say you are a parent that has spoiled giving your child everything not giving them any consequences but the chances are if you're coming to me and saying i think my child has got this the chances are that's not who you are so what i would say is something's happened 
to create this change in them and um so that would be something i would be looking at as to what when this started why did they why have they started behaving this way um because like i say if they if they had this this would be developing um throughout their life they would be very spoiled very entitled or they would be they wouldn't they would lack empathy uh, you would see uh, just you would see signs um there um if there were signs and you didn't quite acknowledge or know what they were, which can also happen because sometimes as, you know, as parents, we get sidetracked from other things. We're busy working or we've got other kids and sometimes we can miss those things or think they're perhaps just the child's being a bit quirky. Um, then unfortunately, if they have got this, then you're having to then deal with the um, the consequences in a sense of what can happen from that. And unfortunately, if I being completely honest, if someone has got this, then it's very unlikely that they're going to change. So then it's about you building your life around that. So whether you're having a relationship with your child that has this and you have to keep that boundary in place so you don't take anything personally in what they say and do. And this can also happen like if they live with you, if they don't live with you. Um, but there is very much a potential for them to be deeply hurtful in this because they, especially if kids are involved, they 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 can do things that they will withhold their grandchildren from you. So they will they will do things that are quite hurtful, and that can be really devastating um, to kind of go through. So I think definitely look at um, when this first started, and I think it's really about working with somebody or talking to somebody um so you're having to you're able to navigate um whatever hurt and pain that might be coming out of the relationship that you have with your child um especially like i say if they're doing hurtful things still if you're not able to talk to them or they just are trying to like flip it round or gaslight you into creating you to be the crazy one what i would suggest is try and really step back take some time out to maybe speak to somebody who understands a little bit more about narcissism and then maybe kind of put some building blocks in place to protect yourself. So it's not that you don't, you can't have a relationship with them, but it's about you're having a relationship with somebody knowing that this is who they are and that they are going to potentially do things to hurt you. Um, so you then don't take that on personally. Um, and I know that sounds easier said than done. And like I say, I, I could go into this a lot more, but it's it's very difficult to do that when there's there's different variations. It's really about you trying to work out what type of personality um, they are, whether it's just traits. With, and in a way, all of this kind of goes in the same way with parents. Um, if you are dealing with a narcissistic parent, if you're living at home with them, that can be very, very challenging. And a lot of the time, in my experience, when I've worked with clients, young clients who are dealing with this as a parent, it is very, very hard to work with a, a young person who has a narcissistic parent because the narcissistic parent will not like them doing therapy. They will not like somebody else having some, in their eyes, some element of control outside of themselves. And I have certainly worked with people where the parents try to uh, intervene um, to because they're, they're threatened by kind of what could be being said in the session and not only that they will try and um, interject they will they will bully the, the the young person into telling them what is being said if anything's being said about them they will then possibly even contact which I've had contact the therapist to give their point of view um, in which case you know I've had to shut that down and say you're you're not my client um, you know this client is is of of legal age so um i'm not discussing anything with you um, and and of course then they don't like that and so then what can then potentially happen is that they will then put the child off having therapy because they need to have that element of control so it's a very difficult situation when you're dealing with somebody um that has a parent that still has influence um, and a lot of the time unfortunately as a therapist you cannot work with somebody that that has this going on because they're getting it's almost like anything that you try and give them to help them is getting undone by the person that's creating the damage now if you're somebody that is really aware of what is going on then of course you can put your boundaries in place the best thing to do is if you're in a situation with somebody that you have to live with is create yourself to be 
in a way, very tough skin. So anything they say or do literally goes over your head. And yes, that does take some work. It is not something that you can do just like that. So I would then say definitely speak to somebody um, to be able to work on yourself. So anything they say or do, you just do not take it on personally. You don't get embroiled in the drama that comes with having a narcissistic parent because they will create that. And they will do, they will use, um, if you've got siblings, they will use the siblings against you. They usually, usually find that there'll be one that they will favour more than the other because they'll, this, there'll be one that they can manipulate and one that they can't. Um, so there's a lot of playing one off against the other. And this can be very, very challenging and really upsetting at times, especially because they will withdraw love. They will use uh, children in 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 games when it comes to especially if they have a, a a wife or a husband they will they will do a lot of this manipulation gaslighting um and and this this can be so devastating especially if you're somebody you you're very aware of it um you're impressionable you're of that age and you can see that your mum or dad is is manipulating the other parent to create you to be the problem um like I say, that a lot of the time, if you're if you're sort of between sort of 16 and 18 is very most of the time, I won't tend to have clients of that age because of the fact that the parent will get involved. But if they are of legal age in a sense that they can start making their own decisions, if they still live at home, then it is about working with them to really create that boundary. So they don't have um, they're not going to keep feeling that feeling that hurt and pain and then obviously then if you just keep working with them if they've left home then it's it's a little bit more easier because obviously they're then away from the situation and then what you're doing then is you're dealing just with the damage that has been ca caused by the, the parents and working within that um so if you are somebody that has had a parent or a, a partner or, or whatever that that you've gone through this then Firstly, let me say I'm, I'm glad you're out of it because a narcissistic relationship in any form can be very, very um, crushing, damaging, soul destroying. It just one of the worst in my experience. And then it becomes really about working on yourself, um, whether it be working with a, a therapist or a life coach, really looking at why this kind of happened how you got it if it's in a relationship how you got into that relationship if it's a parent then it's really looking at those signs so you hopefully then don't take that into like if you've got your own children or if you're going into a relationship because a lot of the time a lot of a parent's behavior will seem normal to you and sometimes it's if you have no other frame of reference you're going to see that as normal and then you might then behave the same way when it comes to your own children or going into a relationship you might start to be that same way um, or you might go completely the opposite and then be deeply submissive in which case then it might allow then someone that is of that uh, personality to then target you because you you're just so vulnerable that you just don't you you see because you've grown up with it you you don't see it as an issue so it really is about spending that time working on those things and really trying to understand yourself so you don't then either like i say raise a child to to be that way or you don't go into a relationship or you don't become that as a parent yourself you're breaking that cycle um so if you believe like I say if you believe your child has this type of personality really try and sort of look into it to see if it's something that can be changed if there is something else going on for them that's creating them to be this way or if this is something that they've had all of their life but you've just not acknowledged it or you've not realized it was a thing um and it is really trying to then adapt your life around that it's not to say that you have to cut everybody off but it certainly means that you've got to put your boundaries in place so they don't keep hurting you but like i've said it is also okay if you get to a point when you feel this affecting your mental health so badly it is okay to step away with love and say i can't do this i love you i i want you in my life but i can't have this behavior i can't have you treating me this way i'm a human being i have feelings i i, I don't want this and if that person isn't going to rectify that behavior to change because they value you 
then that is kind of the answer. And then you kind of go, you know what I've asked you, you, you're not doing it. So I just need to step back and look after myself for a while. It doesn't have to be a forever thing. It can just be a for now thing. You just step back and just regroup, look after yourself, maybe get some help, whether it be, like I say, with, with friends, family, um, a therapist or whoever you want to speak to. And then you can then approach that when you feel kind of a bit more stronger in your mind, you can then perhaps approach this and look at it um, again, you know, to see where you want to go from that. Um, so I hope this video has helped you. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that I've missed that you want answers to. Um, I can always do a part two. Um, sometimes when I'm on camera, I have I kind of go with the flow and then sometimes I, I miss things. So if I have missed something, please put in the comments and I will like I say, do a part two or I'll do another video and I will just keep doing these videos. Um, and they're, and you know, and I will do like probably down the line, I'll redo the narcissism ones again because things change and people have different comments and, and, uh, and ideas and things. So th th it's just going to keep evolving this channel to, to kind of uh, hopefully like help various people. I will put all the narcissistic videos, um, in a playlist. So then you have that to go to. And as I grow, I will do that individually. So if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't want to miss future uploads, then please think about subscribing to the channel because I'm trying to get to my first 1,000 subscribers. Um, I need 4,000 views and then hopefully my channel will get monetized and hopefully we'll go from there. Um, if you would like to buy me a cuppa, the link is going to be in the description box below. If you want to email me, my email is also in the description box below. If you have any ideas that you would like me to talk about, please drop them in the comments or like I say, give me an email if you want me to answer that. Um, if you haven't uh, seen my other channel and you want a little bit more kind of on the celebrity side of things with a therapeutic twist, then that is Tea and Therapy and that link is also below and you can also go across and watch me there. And I am also on TikTok, I've just gone on there and I'm also on Instagram as Just Therapy UK. So come and give me a follow. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Um, it means so much to me and I hope that you get something from this because that is my aim to do that for all of you. Um, so in the meantime, stay safe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.